Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the Pinter 3. Now, as I said when I did the review of the Pinter 2, I'm aware this is normally a tech channel. However, the Pinter is effectively kind of tech for beer, if you like. And there's all sorts of really clever engineering and things that go into making this a kind of all-in-one product. And I want to start this video by talking about the Pinter 2, which I previously reviewed, because I don't think we can do a review of the Pinter 3 without talking about the interesting journey of the Pinter 2. Now, when I originally reviewed the Pinter 2, I was really impressed with it. And then about two weeks after I made that review, there were some reports coming in of people's Pinters exploding. Now, Pinter in turn then told everyone to brew with no pressure just while they investigated the issue, and consequently, they replaced everyone's Pinter 2s with what people affectionately called a Pinter 2.1. This fixed a vulnerability in a very small amount of Pinters that caused the casing to become compromised. Now, with this, the overall pressure of the device was lowered, and that meant a lot of people found that the taps really struggled to pour. Now that wasn't an issue I actually had with my Pinter 2 and I found the tap still poured fine, however I did have a few different issues and one of my Pinters actually had several parts replaced because they failed. And really for me that means that the Pinter 2 started off as a really good product, however as time went on it just didn't seem to last very well. And I think it's worth sharing that at the start of this video for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think the Pinter 3 is Pinter's last chance to make something really good of this product, and so there's a lot hanging on this product. Secondly, and I think this is really important as well, my experience of Pinter 2 and having some failed brews and things like that has been that I've actually had some communication with the Pinter customer service, and each time I've been really impressed with the level of customer service I've received. They've been really helpful at diagnosing issues, replacing parts when required, and also replacing fresh presses when brews have failed. And this is really important for keeping people engaged because good customer service helps people keep coming back. It also means you're more likely to try again if a brew fails because you haven't just wasted that money, you've been sent a new pack. So all that being said, let's talk about the Pinter 3 and what a Pinter is. So a Pinter is about allowing people like you and me to brew their own fresh beer at home without too much effort. Now this is great if you enjoy beer and you like the idea of trying different beers and maybe even having a dabble at home brew without wanting all the different equipment. And the Pinter 3 is essentially an all-in-one device to both brew, condition and drink your beer. And with it you can brew a whole variety of beers and ciders from Pinter's growing range. This range includes everything from dark beers, to light beers, to hoppy beers, to some collaborations with different breweries, and also some ciders as well. When it comes to cost, the Pinter 3 comes in at £99, which is less than the Pinter 2 cost to start with. If you want to save £20, I have put a link below, which you can use to get yourself a £20 voucher. This brings the Pinter 3 down to £79. In terms of pricing, there's not really much to compare it against other than a Pinter 2, but it's certainly cheaper than other more complicated home brewing systems. It's also much cheaper than things like the Perfect Keg, especially when you take into account the keg prices. Of course, the Perfect Keg is more about getting fresh beer and less about brewing your own. When it comes to the packs from Pinter, each of those packs makes up to 10 pints and they vary in price. The latest collab they've done costs £22 for a pack of 10. You can get the ones with the hoppers in for £19.99, or you can get things like ciders without the hoppers for £17.99. This works out between kind of £1.79 and sort of £2.20 a pint. This means it's not as cheap as buying cans from a supermarket, but it's certainly cheaper than most of your pubs. You can also get these presses for less if you join Pinter's Fresh Beer Club, which is free to join and you can pick a monthly subscription beer. You can pause that subscription at any time and you can also cancel it. The really great thing is that you can do all of this online, you don't have to phone up a helpline to cancel a subscription. This is the way all subscriptions should be, in my opinion. If you want to make beer even cheaper, then a lot of people have tried other homebrew kits. And if you check out some of the Facebook groups relating to the Pinter, you can find tips from people who've took some of the 40 pint kits of Wilco and slipped them into three to use in their Pinters. This isn't something I've tried yet, but I think it's going to be something I try in the summer. What this means is that the Pinter isn't going to get you cheap beer, but it is going to get you some really nice tasting fresh beer. And in my year using the Pinter 2, I've been able to try a whole variety of beers from Pinter. And I've tried everything from some of their dark beers to some of their lighter hoppier beers and their ciders, and I've been really impressed with pretty much every single one. The only one I personally didn't like was the Stars and Stripes, but I think that's just down to personal preference. So let's talk about the Pinter 3 specifically and talk about the specification. So the Pinter 3 in many respects looks similar to the Pinter 2. However, this really is where the similarities end. 
So the Pinter 3 comes in a choice of red, blue and grey models and it now has a polymer body rather than a metal body. In practice this means it is 45% lighter and this is really noticeable. And this has a whole variety of advantages, the biggest one being that when you come to mix your press with the water in the Pinter and you have to lift it up and shake it around, this is so much easier to do. And actually when it comes to mixing a press, the best results come when you mix it for longer. This means you know it's thoroughly mixed. This is something that's quite painful to do with a Pinter 2, but it's nice and easy with a Pinter 3 thanks to that weight loss. On the back of a Pinter you'll find the hopper cap and the pressure valve. These now have some grips on them which makes them much easier to turn, especially when wet. The front of a Pinter is where you find the new tap, and I'm going to talk quite a lot about that new active pour tap in this video, but the really important thing to notice compared to the first one is that that tap also has a grip on it now. This means, again, while wet, you can actually undo it, whereas with the Pinter 2, I just kept a pair of monkey wrenches in the kitchen so I could actually undo my taps. The other thing to note is that one of the rubber feet on the bottom of the Pinter is now removable. This means if you were to get liquid trapped between the inner and outer layers of your Pinter 3, you can empty that liquid. This is something that might happen if you were to overfill your Pinter. The Pinter 3 also comes with the new brewing dock. And again, this brewing dock is much lighter than the Pinter 2. Pinter also say this is easier to dock than the previous model. And this is something I've certainly found in using the Pinter so far. And then probably the part of the Pinter 3 that most people, myself included, were most excited about was the new active pour tap. This ditches the kind of weird straw model of the Pinter 2 and looks much more like a conventional tap. Amongst many things, this makes it much easier to clean, but also gives you a better level of control when it comes to pouring your beer. The tap itself can easily be removed and it springs back into a locked position automatically. All in all, I think the new design and spec of the Pinter are great. And whilst the polymer does feel cheaper than that previous metal design, that weight loss certainly makes it worthwhile. There's also some really nice kind of logo embosses on the dock and on the Pinter itself, which make it feel that little bit more premium. So let's talk about what it's like to use. Now, if you watched my previous unboxing and getting a brew on video, you'll know that the brewing process is largely the same as with the Pinter 2. This means you start by sterilizing, you then add your fresh press, water and yeast, give it a good mix and stick it on the brewing dock for a recommended time. After the recommended time, you add in a hopper if you've got one, you then remove the pinter from the brewing dock, put the tap back on and stick it in your fridge to condition. From there, you can pour your pints straight from the tap. This means the whole brewing process is actually really simple and the instructions pinter have put in the app have been improved with the pinter 3. This means those irritating videos that you had to kind of scroll through and it talked through, they've gone and it's much easier to navigate the new instructions. And this is where we should probably talk about that new tap. And prior to its launch, Pinter did a couple of things with members of the Facebook community. Firstly, they sent some members Pinter 3s to have a go at and review, and this led to some really positive comments about the Pinter 3s, but also the new tap. Secondly, they also specifically sent some of the new active pour taps out to people who had Pinter 2s. This is because the tap that retails at £30 separately is actually compatible with the Pinter 2. And generally, the reviews from people were really good. However, as someone who wasn't given one and someone who purchased one, I was a little bit skeptical about these good reviews. So the question is, is that new tap as good as everyone says it is? And in my opinion, mostly. So firstly, when it comes to using the actual tap itself, that whole snap back to lock rather than trying to wiggle it into a locked position is so much easier to use. The tap also feels much, much better made. And I've used this tap on my Pinter 3 for kind of four or five pints now, and generally my experience has been pretty good. Especially because that tap gives you more control of your pour. This is done by eliminating the old kind of 45 or 90 degree pour positions, which opened the straw or the other hole. And actually it gives you much more control on what's coming through the tap itself. Now the two issues people had with the old Pinter 2 tap were either that it gave them pints of foam or that it didn't pour at all. Now the only time I have the didn't pour at all issue is when I put the tap back together wrong and caught the straw. The pints of foam however was a regular occurrence and I basically had to pour two glasses and let them sit. Now the Pinter 3 active pour tap doesn't eradicate this completely but it does make a big difference. And let me share what I mean. Because when I first tapped my stone bridge in my Pinter 3 with that new tap, I found that I did actually get a pint of foam. Now this wasn't as bad as the Pinter 2 and I did find that that foam went down much quicker. However, this wasn't what I was expecting, so I did a bit of investigating. And it seemed to largely be to do with fridge temperature. Now, I'm not a scientist, I don't understand the science of brewing, and that's why I use a pinter rather than doing proper homebrew. However, 
The foam is something to do with the amount of CO2 that has been absorbed by your beer, and this is to do with temperature of your fridge. Now in my case, my pinter sits in the same fridge as my food. This meant that actually the fridge wasn't cold enough to absorb all of that CO2. So what I did is I adjusted my fridge down a couple of degrees and then the pinter tap seemed to pour properly. And one of the things I really like about that new tap, now I've got a hang of it, is that it does make it much easier to control the flow of the beer. This means you can open it more if you want a bigger head or open it less if you want to slow down the pour. Of course, tilting your glass slightly at the same time as pouring will give you better results. The other thing I found is when it snaps back into that closed position, just hold your glass for a few seconds just to catch any drips. All in all, that tap gives you a much more authentic experience of pouring your beer, and it is actually usable compared to the Pinter 2 tap, which just seemed to be unreliable over time. And what I'm really looking forward to is trying out my other tap on the Pinter 2, now I've fitted one onto that as well. And what I'm going to do is bring you guys a full active pour tap review in a couple of months time when I've been using it for a little while. If you want to be first to see that, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And then the final thing we should talk about is cleaning. And when it comes to cleaning the Pinter 3, the experience is largely similar to the Pinter 2. The biggest difference is that adjusting the dials and removing the taps can be done when it's wet without a pair of grips, and also that that tap is about a million times easier to clean. This is thanks to not having that horrible straw you can try and force back in afterwards. So all in all, what's the verdict? Now the Pinter 3 basically shows us that Pinter have listened to everyone's pain points and concerns and tried to address those. It takes the things that were good about the Pinter 2 and makes them better and reduces the pain points. That lighter body makes it much easier to lift and to mix, especially for longer periods of time. And this is something that's key for having a successful brew. You want to make sure your mix is well mixed with the water. The new dock feels well made and is certainly much easier to attach as well. And then that new tap is so much better, not just for pouring, but also for cleaning. My only concern when it comes to the Pinter 3 is the cap on the Pinter itself. And this is because it looks largely similar to the Pinter 2. And a couple of times I had failed brews with my Pinter 2 were actually due to the cap. And this is because on the inside of the cap there is a kind of rubber ring, and this is used for sealing it. What I found with my Pinter 2 cap is that over time this rubber ring came loose. This means my concern with having the same setup for a Pinter 3 cap is that this may occur as well. Now when this did happen to me, Pinter were really good at replacing that cap, however I'd have liked to see that cap improve. So all in all, should you pick up a Pinter 3? And in my opinion, if you're looking for a relatively simple way to get into brewing your own beer and enjoying fresh beer at home, then a Pinter 3 is a really good way to go. Pinter have got a really nice beer selection and they also keep adding to that collection. Of course, there's also the option to experiment thanks to the advice that is on all of the Facebook groups. Personally, the quality of the Pinter 3 feels really good and the tap is a massive improvement. And I am really looking forward to continuing to brew with the Pinter 3 as time goes on and I'll make sure I give you guys an update. If you do want to pick up a Pinter 3, I have got a link below where if you follow that and fill in your details, you can save £20 off your Pinter, which brings it down to £79. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like subscribe to my channel and if you've got any questions do stick them below or if you just want an update on how I'm getting on do stick that below as well and I want to answer those. This is a product I've purchased myself, this is something I use for enjoyment in my spare time and I have no affiliation with Pinter at all. This means if you want an honest opinion of how things are going then I will happily answer that for you guys. Finally if you do want to buy me a beer I've put a link below to do that as well and I'll see you guys again soon.